Okay, uh, on this wheel there are defective ball bearings. You can see that the wheel is loose along the axle. So we're going to be winding up taking off this wheel so that we can switch out the ball bearings. And I thought this would be a good time to give kind of um, so overall examination of some problems that can occur with the front wheel of the Boogaboo -boog Chameleon. So uh, another sort of ball bearing axle problem would be like this wheel. As you see, while I turn the wheel, the uh, center plug turns as well. And this means that the ball bearings have rusted fast onto the axle or holding it in place. Uh, I can try to oil it, but uh, on occasion, if the ball bearing has been too damaged by rust, it will eventually crack open, lose its balls, and be more or less like the other one. Uh, so on this one also, we could take off the wheel and replace the ball bearings. I'm going to start with this one and we'll get to some of the more more of the mechanisms of the wheel as we go. In order to remove this wheel, you need to take a flathead screwdriver and pry off the stopper. You can see on both sides there's there's this side and this, and this side is more bulbous, and that's how you know when it where it's the stopper. Underneath is some teeth that hold it in place onto the axle. And beneath that is another ring with teeth on the inside that also needs to be removed. Uh, if they're very rusted like these, be very careful if you don't have access to these parts because there's a good chance that they'll crack and you'll need to replace them. If you do do so and you don't have access to parts, a screw and a nut, if it's the right size, will work just as well as the original axle. Okay, now I've removed that, and now hopefully I'll be able to hammer through the axle, but if the insides of the ball bearings have rusted too tightly, then I'll have to use some oil and such first, so that I have some room. In this case, it's so far worked fine. Once you have part of it taken off, you can see how this part works. This is like a shock absorption uh, on the Boogaboo wheel. You can adjust different settings for your shock absorption. But once you've removed this, you can actually pull this whole part off with the spring. In case you need to replace this part sometime, that's handy. It also gives you a little bit more room to work with. Uh, in this case, the insides of the ball bearings are rusted tightly onto the axle. So I'm going to have to try to pull the wheel off and then maybe clip this axle and replace it. Okay, now I've managed to remove the wheel. And as you can see on this axle, these are the parts, the inner ring of the ball bearings. And uh, this outer one is rusted tight onto here. So I'm going to use a little WD-40 and see if I can loosen it up. If not, I'll have to clip the axle and use a different axle. But we can spray it a bit and leave it. And in the meantime, I wanted to show you some other parts. Sometimes this top shaft breaks and uh, you can't get the wheel to sit tightly anymore. So you need to replace the shaft. And the way you do that is under there, there's a screw. And if you unscrew that, you can pull the whole shaft out. Inside here sits a ball bearing, which is actually the same size as the ball bearing for the wheel. Um, that's useful sometimes for me when switching parts. But in any case, you can unscrew this and just replace it with another shaft. Uh, you need to get around this rubber belt, so sometimes it's easier to remove the wheel. Um, the rubber belt is difficult to remove, as well as this back part. So I would recommend if you have problems with either of those to be careful because I have not successfully removed either without breaking them. So, let's see. Sometimes if you use WD-40 you can kind of work moving parts and see if you can get them to move, but in this case I don't think it's going to be worth the effort. So I'm going to clip it uh, and then I'll show you how to switch out the ball bearings on the inside of the wheel. 
Okay, what I just said a moment ago was that I planned to clip this axle. And uh, this plan was based on the idea that I could get an axle out of another wheel, but it turns out that that axle and ball bearings were bad as well. So, uh, as I'm assuming you do not have spare wheels at home, I'm going to show you what to do when this inner ring of the axle is rusted fast. And you need to remove it. And what I'm going to do is use a Dremel, because that's the safest method that I know of, to carefully slice so that I can peel it away. And then I can use a little bit of rust eater or sanding to remove the rust. And uh, but before that, I thought I'd show you where I got my ball bearings. And that is from a spare wheel. And it is, I've removed this shaft. I uh, unscrewed the nut and pulled it out. And there are actually two ball bearings inside one that comes at the top and one that goes through the bottom. And these are almost always in very good condition because the wheel slots into a plastic tunnel on the stroller and thus no pressure is actually put on the ball bearings. So they always come out almost perfectly new. These ball bearings have an extra length of lip, but this is fine because you just insert that inside into the wheel. Before I replace the ball bearings here, I'm going to have to remove the outer ring, which is still stuck in the wheel. You do that with a flathead screwdriver by prying from underneath. And it'll pop right out. And then I can put this in and just press it into place, hammer it if you can't get it perfectly. We'll do the other side. A little bit of sand. Remove that. Press it into place. Now I have new ball bearings, or as good as new ball bearings, in the wheel. And I'll show you how to use a Dremel to remove this. So put on some safety goggles. You want to use uh, some sort of a cutting wheel. And turn your speed all the way up. Be careful for the camera on the phone, please. have uh, sliced a groove through the, uh, the piece. You can use a thin sc screwdriver to kind of wedge it in and try to pry it. And I actually did this off camera and it just, because it was so hot, it just snapped and fell off. And there's a little bit of scarring on the axle, but it's so small it won't have any structural effects. Uh, you want to rem then remove the other ring in this case, which was not too damaged. And now I can get the axle out and begin to replace the wheel. And you just want to put it back together the way that you took it apart. Get to this part, make sure to put your spring back in place. And let's see, this was the right one. It's on. Then you're going to put your tooth wheel back. Whenever you're dealing with any of these tooth wheel parts, the idea is to have it flat so that the wheels go in straight and then to apply equal pressure on all sides. And what I like to use is a pipe. You want to find a pipe that more or less fits around the shaft, but not so far as that it's not going to put pressure on the teeth. If you don't have a pipe that fits, you can sometimes use your pliers, but then you need to sort of angle it carefully and go around. And you might have to hammer down the teeth individually later with your screwdriver. Same principle applies here. Some of the uh, teeth will be bent inwards, so you want to pry them out so that they're flat. And then the trick with these, let's see, this is a little bit too tight, so I'm going to have to relieve some of the pressure first. Do that just by hammering quickly on the shaft. The 
trick with these is to either use a spoon, which I don't have access to right now, and then hammer it with the hammer, or what I will be using is a spare inner tube that I'll fold over a couple times and place over. And this will help to evenly distribute the pressure from the hammer such that it hammers it down without denting the bulbous head and thus uh, affecting the structural integrity. So I hope this video helped. As usual, uh, feel free to leave any questions and comments.